Today, we will be using the associative property of multiplication. The associative property of multiplication tells us that the way in which numbers are grouped does not change their product. So if I'm multiplying three numbers, 4 times 6 times 2, I could group this two different ways. I could go from left to right and just do the first two first. 4 times 6 equals 24, and I still need to multiply by 2. Multiplying by 2 is usually pretty easy. You just have to double the first factor. Or you can just add two 24s. Either way, you're going to get 48. I could also group the last two numbers and do them first. So 6 times 2 is 12. And I still have to multiply that 4. So 4 times 12. If you know your 4s times tables or your 12s, that's an easy basic fact. If you don't, then you're going to have to add four 12s, which is also 48. So no matter how we grouped these, their products are the same. So they all are 48. So here's my first example, and you'll be doing something similar. You're going to have three numbers to multiply, and you need to decide how you want to group them. You can just pick one way, you don't have to do both. In my examples, I will do both though. So if I was doing this, I would group the first two. Two times four is eight, and I still have times seven. I picked this way because I know all my facts, and I know eight times seven equals 56. If you don't know your sevens or eights, you need to be practicing them. And you might want to group them the second way. So you'll still need to know 4 times 7, but that's easier than 8 times 7. So 4 times 7 is 28. And then we just have to multiply that by 2. Now, I doubt anyone has all their 28 times tables memorized. So we might need to use our strategy of repeated addition with this one. So just 28 plus 28. 8 plus 8 is 16. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. And you get 56. So obviously, the best way is if you have your facts memorized, and you do it the first way. But if you don't, you have another option. Here's my second example. 3 times 3 times 9. So again, I think I'm going to go with those first two, the 3 times 3 grouped together. 3 times 3 is 9. I still have times 9. And I know 9 times 9 equals 81. If we grouped them the second way, we would do 3 times 9 first, which is 27. And then we still need to multiply that by 3. And I'm going to do a repeated addition. 3 sevens is 21. And then 4 twos is 8. So no matter how we group them, our product is still 81. You'll also have a problem like this, where you have, you have the product, but you're missing one of the three factors. So I have 4 times something times 2, and it equals 24. So I'm going to take the two factors I do know, and I'm going to multiply them. So 4 times 2 is 8, and I have a number I don't know yet, 
and it equals 24. So I need to figure out 8 times what equals 24. So I know 8 times 3 equals 24. If you needed to, you could also use repeated subtraction. You could do the 24 and then subtract 8, which gives you 16. And then you keep subtracting 8. 16 subtract 8 is 8. Then 8 subtract 8 is 0. And then you figure out how many 8s you subtracted. You subtracted 3 8s. So if you don't know, 8 times 3 equals 24. You can take 24 and just keep subtracting 8s and see how many 8s you subtract. So you have multiple strategies that you can use to figure these out until you get those facts memorized as quickly as possible. Okay, time for you to do some practice problems. Now that we've figured out that that one was 3. 4 times 2 times 8 equals. So you need to group those numbers one way and find the answer. Unpause it when you're ready, and we'll check it, and I'll do it both ways, so you can see it no matter which way you got. Okay, so I would group the first two. 4 times 2 is 8, times 8, and I know 8 times 8 is 64. You may also have done it this way. 2 times 8 is 16, times 4. And then add four sixteens, which will get you sixty four as well. Okay, your second practice problem three times five times two. Go ahead and pause and unpause when you're ready to check. Okay, I would group the last two because that gives us a 10, and 10s are always easy to multiply with. 3 times 10 equals 30. If you did it the other way, you would get 15 times 2, which is also pretty easy. Just have to double 15 to get 30 again. So no matter how we group them, their product stays the same. And then one practice problem where you're missing one of your factors. Go ahead and pause. Okay, we take the two factors we know. 2 times 5 is 10. And we multiply 10 by something to equal 40. I can tell by looking at it that it's 4. If you can't tell by looking at it, you could take 40 and subtract 10 four times. Okay. Here are the problems you'll bring and check in class tomorrow. It's number one, two times two times eight. Number two, five times four times three. And the third one, you have three times two times something will equal 18. Good work today, and we'll see you tomorrow.